Channel welcomes you back to Daytona International Speedway where the lights come on for Budweiser Full Award Qualifying for the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series. They're getting set for Saturday night. Yes, sports cars tonight, bush cars tomorrow night, but Saturday night, it's this. White knuckle racing under the lights at near 190 miles an hour. The sparks will fly and the fireworks won't just be in the sky. And you'll see it all live on NASCAR on Fox. But first, order of business is to set the field. And that's what we'll do tonight. Qualify the 38 fastest plus five provisional drivers that will start the Pepsi 400 on Saturday night. Again, we've done a big turn, a big left turn from California Dreaming on the Road Course, where Robbie Gordon started from pole here, lapping last year's winner, or rather Robbie Gordon. Yeah, Jeff Gordon, Robbie Gordon. You know who I mean. This is the guy that had all the problems last week. Robbie Gordon. Well, he didn't have them all. He just had all he could handle. Dale Jr. survived two spins to come back and finish 11th. And here's the incident that sparked the after race confrontation, Tony Stewart and Brian Vickers. When all was done in the California sun, Jeff Gordon had yet another road course victory. Hendrick Motorsports turning things around in Jeff Gordon's direction. They would celebrate in victory lane and move on to Daytona. You talked about Jeff Gordon at the road course. In practice so far, he's picked up right where he left off. He was the fastest cars, but those two DEI cars, Michael Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt Jr., they were not very far behind. You're about to hear Tara Rowell, a mother of four, who beat out 100. And let's go to Pit Road. And uh, when we last saw him, he was lighting off fireworks. Dick Berggren. <laughs> I wish I was lighting off fireworks right now, Mike. But this is the guy, the guy that drives car number 24 that's been all the fireworks for the last several weeks. Jeff Gordon won the pole at Michigan. Last week at Infineon, he won the pole, won every practice, led the most laps, won the race, and he is starting out this weekend right where he left off in California. There's been one practice session. Guess who's been fastest? Jeff Gordon. Hasn't won a pole here for the July race at Daytona since 96. Got a real good chance to do it tonight. To Matt Yoakum. Top 10 finishes in the last six races, starting all the way back at Richmond in early May. Yeah, but there's another guy, uh, Jeff Gordon. I tell you, Hendrick Motorsports, overall, I was listening to Chad Knauss, and he was saying that they wrecked a bunch of race cars, and so they had to build some new ones. And this is when something bad, out of something bad comes something good. And in the process of building new ones, they've made their cars a lot, lot better than they were. So they've got better race cars and they're capitalizing on that with some good power too. Jeff Gordon trying to continue his winning ways. Sonoma was all but a Gordon benefit. Scott Pruitt kept him honest through much of the race in a fourth Ganassi car. There's Pruitt in that 39. But when it came to the checkered flag, it was surprisingly Jamie McMurray chasing Jeff Gordon, but nobody came close. No, he just kept looking back, just didn't want anybody to get too close, because I think he could have stretched it out even more than he did. And that 92 laps was of 110. To me, that's still a deceiving number because some of those laps he did not lead was through the cycle of green flag pit stops. All right, Larry, I don't think he was ever passed on the racetrack by I anybody. I don't either, but just think of the dominance we've seen of a particular car. Thinking back to Jimmy Johnson and how he dominated the 600, uh, some other races here recently, and uh, then Jeff leading almost the entire race at Sonoma. I'm a little bit concerned, old guys, about this race car. No flames. This well, not only that, it sounds really different. It's just got no flames, though. It's <laughs> Listen to this thing as it comes by. It's like, ah, I don't do that well. We'll know here if it's pretty good or not. See what he runs on this first lap. 48-28. Oh, yeah. That's pretty sporty. Yeah, I, I'm gonna try, I wish I could get my car to sound like that, Mike. Yeah, if he gets seven tenths, he's a pole man. Yeah, I think he's going to be right there. I don't like to see that sparks. Uh, every time a car hits the track, it's just like hitting the brake. His time in practice, as we mentioned, he was the quickest, 47-79. You remember last weekend, uh, 
when he was qualifying, he ran off the track on turn 10. And we said, well, that's it. That's everyone his yeah, lap. It was it. <laughs> it was on the pole. <laughs> it was that on pole. Don't do that here. <laughs> and the thing sparking around here, that's supposed to hurt you. And this thing here, it's not even bouncing. Nah, it's yeah. just staying right there. Bottoming out like that is supposed to slow you down. He's got a billion reasons to want to win uh, the pole. I believe, Pepsi promotion. I believe it'll be there for right now. Let's see what it 4770 just barely. It's yeah. good enough to knock Michael Waltrip off for the time being. Well, Larry, he didn't get as much on that second lap as I thought he would. Uh, if he'd gotten a full seven tenths, he'd be down around a 60. And I think the reason he didn't run all the way up the racetrack on that first lap, he was down about the middle of the racetrack. The lower you run on the first lap, the least amount you're going to pick up on the second lap. Well, Matt's with one of his Hendrick teammates, who right now is fifth. You know, I think back to just what, hearing what the Brian had to say. Remember Jimmy Johnson here about uh, last year when we were down here, and he kept working with uh, Jeff Gordon because he could get the lead, but he couldn't figure out how to keep it. And Jeff Gordon kept schooling him and taking him out there and showing him and talking to him. And in the race, the 500, Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson was pretty darn yes, he racy. Matt has our fastest qualifier so far. And Gordon, yeah. Gordon in a special paint scheme, one of about 21 different cars with different paint schemes this weekend. Coming off a big win last week, Jeff, and a big win back in Talladega when you won this Fritcher Plate race. Well, uh, Pepsi coming on board and having these special uh, paint schemes with our DuPont Chevrolet is uh, working out well for us right now. So uh, what an awesome day it's been for an awesome week, really. Um, you know, the guys unloaded this thing, and, and I felt, you know, the first time out, it felt really good. And they told me how fast we went. I was like, where's is, where is this coming from? So guys have done a great job, you know, just massaging on the body, massaging on the power. And obviously the Hendrick Motorsport tire has been, been strong here. But we want somebody to win a billion dollars. So um, uh, I hope everybody gets a, a chance to at least play for it and, and uh, join in on, on Pepsi's celebration here for this uh, billionaire deal. Now a different setup with Bush qualifying where you had the Bush guys go out and do two different practice sessions then qualify and park. Would you like to see something like that on the plate races in Cup? Well, yeah, I actually wouldn't mind seeing it. Um, you know, I, I, my big thing is that we need to practice under the same conditions that we're going to race in. This is a night race. I want to be able to race practice for night conditions uh, at, at night. So, you know, but I do, I wouldn't mind at all uh, us, us practicing, doing all of our stuff, qualifying, and, and not be on the racetrack again in, until uh, it's time to race, you know, pull the tape off and go. Now I've seen you win a million dollars before, but someone had the chance to win a billion? Well, somebody's going to win a million for sure, but uh, they've also got a chance to win a billion, which is pretty unbelievable. I had not heard that uh, offer. And next year, I'm going to try to talk them into making it a trillion. But uh, I tell you what, a billion dollars, that's a lot of money. That's a lot. That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of Pepsi for a long time. And that's Hendrick Powered Cars have five of the top ten positions right now. There's the fastest. Jeff Gordon, last week's pole sitter and race winner. You know, I'm just amazed. For so many years, we would come down here, Daryl, and be almost like a road course. You'd see two, two and a half seconds separating the field. Right now, from first to 38th is only about three quarters of a second. Yep. I mean, that just shows this competition. Well, the Pepsi 400, the Pepsi cars on the pole. How about that, Dick Berger? How about that, Jeff Gordon? Three poles in a row. Go ahead, take a swig of that Pepsi on camera for us. Well, are you going to spank them on Saturday night the way you spanked them last week in Infineon? I tell you what, uh, what a great job by this race team. Uh, we didn't expect to come in here and sit on the pole tonight. Uh, we, we, we haven't been pole material on these restrictor play tracks in a while, but a lot of, a lot of hard work went into it. Bergy, Brian, uh, all the guys uh, back in the shop, uh, Robbie Loomis uh, has just got a great group of guys underneath them right now. We're having a lot of fun. and. Um, I guess we, we won the Battle of the Colas tonight, so it's all about this Cola right here. And I uh, want to uh, just say hi to our folks DuPont also, because uh, we don't want to forget them. They're our main guys. Nice job, Jeff. Mike. Two poles in a row for Jeff Gordon. That's reason for fireworks. And here's how they'll line up. And just remember, he is the man that stopped the DEI dominance at the last restrictor plate race back at Talladega in April. Thanks for joining us for Buck Pole Qualifying. Congratulations to Jeff Gordon on the pole for the Pepsi 400.